Good morning, everybody. Hi, my name is Allison, and I am an educator with the St. Louis Zoo. Now today, I am presenting from my home. Um, I'm also doing my part to help prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus. So I do wear a mask, but because I am in my home and I'm not sharing my space with anyone at the moment, I have pulled my mask down away from my face so that you can see me a little bit better. I am so excited to bring today's webinar to you all about spiders. I hope you're here to learn some really cool things about Missouri spiders. They're one of my favorite invertebrates. Spiders, what's really neat about them, I think, is that they are found in every single habitat in the state of Missouri. So no matter where you go, there's probably a spider. Now that may freak you out a little bit, but remember, spiders are so, so small. We are giants compared to spiders. Um, you probably have even seen some spiders in your backyard. Now, all of these spiders, um, it's actually a really, really good thing uh, because spiders eat a lot of insects and a lot of other kinds of bugs, like maybe other kinds of arachnids, especially things we may consider pests, like mosquitoes, um, or sometimes even other spiders. Um, spiders very often are preyed upon by other spiders, which is crazy. So there's um, arachnologist, I looked this up, and there's some going back and forth on the numbers, but arachnologists, people who study spiders estimate that there are 30,000, that's a number I have trouble getting my head around, but 30,000 spiders per one acre in the woodlands, right? And almost over two and a half million spiders in an acre of grassland. So that is a lot of spiders. And if you live in a part of the state where there are a lot of farms, um, especially farms that grow things like corn and soybeans. I know I grew up in an area in central Illinois where there were a lot of corn and soybeans. Those spiders can eat about one insect a day, which is huge, a huge, huge help to the farmers who are growing those crops. So, and I see some people are always uh, worried if they're looking at poisonous spiders, if it's a spider that could hurt you, maybe they make you a little bit nervous. Like I said, that's okay. Um, so like I said, the most dangerous predator to spiders is usually other spiders. Um, now, in Missouri, we will go over these. There are two species of venomous spiders that people tend to be really nervous around, the black widow and the brown recluse, but we will learn what those look like so that you can identify them and how you can help keep yourself safe um, if you live in an area where maybe you've seen them so that you can stay safe and the spider can stay safe, doing its great job of eating all of those bugs. <laughs> all right, so let's get into spiders more. All right, so spiders are arthropods, right? An arthropod is just a big word for something with jointed legs. So we have joints in our body, right? Any place where your body bends, that's a joint. And arthropods have lots and lots of joints in their legs. And spiders specifically are arachnids. And these are invertebrates. These are arthropods that typically have eight legs. Now, beyond spiders, other arachnids include ticks, mites, uh, something called a harvestman. We might, or you might call them daddy long legs, and scorpions. Right? And spiders have two main body parts, right? They have their head, their cephalothorax, so it's like their head and their middle kind of smooshed together, and their abdomen, right? which may be a little bit different than what we know about insects that have six legs, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, and two antenna. Spiders don't have any antenna. Now, here in the state of Missouri, we have over 300 different kinds of spiders. That's a lot of different kinds of spiders and so much to learn about. Now, we don't have enough time to go over all 300, I don't think I could even name three, the all 300 spiders, but we're going to look at some of the most common ones that you might find on a hike out in the woods or maybe in a park or in your backyard. So let's get started. <laughs> all right, we're gonna start with this, these two kinds of spiders and they're really, really similar. So we have orb weavers and uh, micranthina. I believe I'm saying that correctly. 
a lot of things are named after named using Latin <laughs> in science, and it can be kind of hard to tricky, kind of hard to uh, explain a little bit. So orb weavers make a classic kind of spider web in you know, all of the different sides, like maybe what we see in a lot of Halloween decorations. And this is a picture of an orb weaver spider web. It's really hard to get a picture of a web, but we can tell it's there. And I'm using my mouse pointer to point to it because it has some little bundled up insects that it had caught and had eaten in the middle of its web. Now the Micranthina spiders are also orb, web, orb weaver spiders. That's a bit of a tongue twister, but their abdomens are kind of spiky, right? But they're not actually sharp. But maybe if you are something that might want to eat that spider, it will make you think twice uh, before you go and chow down. <laughs> I know I certainly would probably think twice before trying to wrap my mouth around something so spiky like that. All right, so those are the spiders that sometimes if you're hiking, they may make their webs over the trail and you walk into them. I know I certainly have walked into my fair share of orb weaver webs for sure. Um, I even have a friend who sometimes she'll get a stick and she'll call it her spider stick and hold it and wave it out in front of her to kind of knock those webs down before she runs into them or herself, which is pretty smart. All right, our next kind of spider. Oh, I almost forgot the coolest thing about orb weavers. I was so excited when I found this at my friend's house. Some orb weavers will also make a design in the middle of their webs. And you may have seen this before. Now this is a really, really big word and I'm going to go ahead and type it in the chat. It's called a stabilimentum. And this is a design that a spider will make um, in the middle of their web. So it was called a stabilimentum because scientists originally thought that it provided stability, made that web stronger, but we've since found out that is not the case. And it seems like depending on the spider, it serves different reasons, but it's something scientists are still thinking about. So this could be something you could research too. Uh, so some scientists say maybe it's a way for spiders to attract mates. Some say that because if you shine a black light flashlight over it, it glows under UV light, that it prevents things like bees and birds from flying into that web and destroying all of the spider's hard work. So it helps keep it safe. Um, other scientists say and have found that maybe this structure that it glows under UV light, uh, maybe it actually attracts different kinds of insects. Right? I still don't know for sure. And it could be a spider by spider instance, right? A species by species. So something cool to investigate. <laughs> All right, let's look at our next kind of spider, which are cobweb spiders. I don't know about you, but I sometimes find some of these kinds of webs, these really tangly webs in my basement or maybe in my garden shed if I haven't been out there for a while. Um, but cobweb spiders, are really, really common. And this is just like a house spider. And you know you have a house spider, especially if you see something like this egg sac right here. So it could just be like a dark brown ball in the middle of that tangly, tangly web. And usually you see the mama spider right next to it, kind of near it. And this spider, this picture on the left, I took in my garden shed. And this was a female spider, so she has her egg sac, but I don't know if you can tell what that mass is underneath the egg sac. That's another spider. So she had caught another spider in her web to help feed her and hopefully help her take care of her babies. And then the picture on the right was another kind of cobweb spider um, that I found in my sink next to my washing machine. Now, I don't mind having spiders in my home because if there's any other kind of bug in there, then it'll eat it and that's okay with me. But um, I do mind sometimes if they make their webs in places where, um, where you know I'm living. So we do a lot of dusting, right? You do a lot of dusting and that's okay. And if you find a spider in your house and you figure out what kind it is and you can safely do it, you can always put it back outside. <laughs> so those are cobweb spiders. And cobweb spiders, um, there is a very familiar kind that a lot of people get really nervous about. Black widows are also a kind of cobweb spider. 
and I have a picture and we have a little test at the end to, uh, so to help you see the difference between a black widow and some other similar looking spiders like house spiders. Right? Remember a black widow has that red hourglass typically on its abdomen and it's just the females. So let's look at a similar species of spider, which are cellar spiders. And they are different spiders. So they also make kind of cobwebs. Their webs aren't sticky, but when they weave them, they're so tangly that a prey item might walk into it and can't figure out how to get out. And then that leaves the spider enough time to jump on it and capture it. So this spider, um, in the pictures here, this cellar spider, this is another female and she, carries her sack of eggs with her in her mouth, right? So very, very carefully will she hold on to those and carry them around and protect them, right? They're kind of held together a lot looser than something like a house spider. Now, I have something really special to share with you because I was lucky enough to find a cellar spider on the underside of my compost barrel. So I very carefully uh, captured it and we're going to look at it underneath a microscope. So that we can see it up close. Here is our cellar spider. Now this kind of spider it poses no harm to us. I'll turn my light up on my microscope here maybe. There we go, there's my light. Now, I have it in a little clear container so I'm not worried about it getting away from me. And after today's webinar I will take it back out to where I found it and let it go because I don't have the tools in my home to take care of it. But it certainly can find all it needs to eat by that compost barrel, which I'm sure it was really happy there because there's lots of ants and everything. <laughs> so here's our cellar spider. And you can sometimes tell the difference between a um, cellar spider or um, between a house spider if, you look at the way it's hanging. So cellar spiders typically hang, <clears throat> excuse me, typically hang upside down. So cellar spiders have much longer legs than house spiders. Um, when if you look at and compare the two, their abdomens, their bottoms aren't quite as round. They're a little bit longer. Uh, and if you see them with a sack of eggs, that house spider egg case is a lot more covered and protected than a cellar spider's egg case. I'm going to move it around, see if we can see. I'm going to try turning it on its side so that maybe you can see its head. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Oh, there's a pretty good view of our cellar spider. So those nice long legs, that long abdomen, that back end right here is nice and long. And cellar spiders, they don't move around a whole lot. Uh, they just kind of hang out like this one is doing. <laughs> so pretty cool. All right, let's move on to our next kind of spider. Right now, this kind of spider, jumping spiders, are my personal favorite kind of spiders. I think they're really, really cute. There's a certain little animated spider um, that you may be familiar with that's pretty famous and it's based off of a jumping spider. Now jumping spiders will build a web but unlike all of the spiders that we've talked about before uh, they build a web to go back and rest in. They build like a little hammock web. These guys are ambush predators. They have really really good eyesight so they will hunt and stalk their prey and they're also pretty intelligent little guys too. Um, there have been studies with jumping spiders showing that they can solve all kinds of problems. Like if they have difficulty getting to a spot where there's food and there's one path that looks a little easier to take than the other, they'll sit there, they'll look at it, you can see them looking around and they'll choose that path that is a little bit easier to take. And guess what? I have a jumping spider to show you today. These spiders look really, really big underneath the microscope, but this little spider here could fit easily on the top of a pencil. It is so tiny. 
But there we go, he's just hanging out. We can see his eyes. So a lot of spiders can have up to eight eyes, sometimes six. Jumping spiders have these two huge forward facing eyes and lots of little eyes around it so they can see all around their body. And these two huge forward facing eyes are what's going to help them see their prey and figure out if they can jump from one place to another. Now they will also kind of put a strand of silk down someplace as like a bungee cord so if they happen to miss Right. They're still attached to something by their silk and they can kind of rescue themselves. Now this little one was moving around in the, my little container a whole lot earlier, but has since kind of just stayed put, which I'm appreciative of because now we can see it a little bit easier. So, oh my gosh, aren't you cute? Look at those little eyes. I hope you think it's cute too. We have just a few more spiders to go through, and then we'll learn how to tell the difference between some of our venomous spiders in the state of Missouri. All right, so there's our jumping spider again. All right, next we have something called a wolf spider. All right now, wolf spiders are also ambush predators like our jumping spiders. Uh, they will, instead of building like a hammock kind of web, they will make these funnel webs. And in this picture, it's a little hard to see, but right here is a little leg of a wolf spider that made this big funnel web, um, hanging out and waiting for maybe something to walk over the web, and it can jump out and get it, or it'll go out and hunt. But this is what a wolf spider looks like right here. Now, wolf spiders are often confused for things like a brown recluse. A brown recluse, which can give you a pretty painful bite. Um, and some people are allergic to it in varying degrees. For most people, it just, it hurts a lot. You do need to go to the doctor, seek some medical treatment, and usually you're okay. But a brown recluse will have something that looks like a violin on its back instead of this white line on its cephalothorax right here. But just like with anything, if you're not sure what it is, it's always a good idea to give it its face. <laughs> All right, and then guess what? In the state of Missouri, we do have our own species of tarantula. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> I think it's exciting. <laughs> so Missouri tarantula is usually found south of the Missouri River. So we don't have any Missouri tarantulas here in the St. Louis area where I am. Um, so it is our largest species of spider in Missouri, and it can be about six inches wide. So that would be like from leg to leg. It can be a pretty, pretty big spider. Um, now, even though it may look really scary, these are very shy spiders. Uh, they don't like to hang out in places where a lot of humans are, um, and they will only bite if provoked. So if you're bothering it too much and maybe it's raising its front legs saying, uh, you're big, you're scary, I don't want you around, it could bite, but most of the time these animals are just going to find a place to hide to get away from you, right? Because remember, compared to a spider, even if it's a six inch big spider, we are still way more big than that poor little guy. So these guys are found in the Ozarks. So the Ozarks are south of the Missouri River. Um, and it is possible that they could bite, but like I said, it is pretty, pretty rare. So tarantulas, cute and fuzzy, very secretive and shy, definitely a camera shy species. I do not have one to show you today. <laughs> All right, now we have the brown recluse. So here's that violin marking that's on its cephalothorax. Right. There's only one species of recluse spider found in Missouri, and these guys typically hunt at night, so they are nocturnal, and they will hide during the day. Now, they are very, very good at hiding. That's why they're called recluses, right? If someone is a recluse, they kind of stay to themselves, right? And that's what this spider does, too. Um, but they do have a bad reputation because some people can react poorly if they are bitten. Now, because recluses are really good at hiding, if you have garden gloves or boots or shoes in a garden shed and leave it there for a while, a recluse or really any other kind of spider 
could make its home there. So it's always a good idea before you stick your hand under something, especially if you're sticking it into something like a garden glove, shake it out really well. Uh, recluses, they don't like to hang out where there's a lot of movement. So if you are working someplace where you don't want these spiders hanging around, move stuff around a lot. Eventually, if there's a recluse there, it's gonna go, eh, this is too busy, I'm gonna move on. <laughs> so move stuff around if you don't want a recluse around. Now we've got one more kind of arachnid, a daddy long legs or a harvestman, right? And I put this in our spider webinar, even though it's not a spider, but it looks an awful lot like a spider, right? This guy right here. So they're not true spiders, even though they have eight legs, right? But they only have one body part, right? Um, they're not, since they're not true spiders, they don't have venom, they don't have fangs, they don't spin silk, uh, but they are omnivorous scavengers. So they eat plants and meat, right? But like I said, these guys are not spiders. Okay, so now here comes your test to see if you can identify a black widow or a brown recluse. All right, so I've got a picture here of a spider and I have a poll that's gonna ask you, which spider do you think it is? Is it a brown recluse or is it a species of wolf spider? Which one do we think it is? I'll give us a few moments. All right, and it looks like most of you said wolf spider, and you would be correct. This is a wolf spider, right? There's no fiddleback pattern to the spider like with our brown recluse. So once again, here's our brown recluse side by side next to our wolf spider. Very, very similar, but we do have that violin pattern. All right, and we'll do one more. Which spider is it? Which one do we think this is? So is this a house spider? This is a cobweb spider. Or is it a black widow? So which one do we think it is? A house spider or a black widow? And if the poll isn't pulling up for you, go ahead and type in the chat. Which one do you think this is? All right, so once again, looks like most of you are thinking black widow. And good job, you're correct. Sometimes a black widow spider might have red on another side of its abdomen, or it might look more like spots instead of a um, hourglass. Now this is another kind of cobweb spider. I wasn't able to identify it that I found in my yard, but it wasn't a black widow. It's just something like a house spider. All right. All right, good job, everybody. So because Missouri does have two species of venomous spiders, like I said, it is always important that we give all wild animals, spiders included, their space. So shake things out before you use them if you think there might be a spider in them. Um, and if you don't want spiders to hang out in a certain area, um, disturb it a little bit. Go around and shake stuff up. Um, now, bites from black widows and recluses are rarely fatal. Um, if they are, it's usually because of an allergic reaction. But do go see a doctor if you think you saw, if you think you got bit by a spider. And especially if you can find that spider and bring it with you, that's going to be even better. Now, I could go on and on and on about spiders. <laughs> but I'm going to check out our Q&A to see if you guys have any questions. Oh, why the micranthemas? Why do they have spiked abdomens? Um, it is and type of an adaptation. So my first thought, if I see something spiky, especially um, if I might want to eat it, I might give it its space because those spikes could hurt me. So it could be a defense adaptation, All right? Why do tarantulas bite, right? So anything with a mouth can bite, right? Um, and animals usually bite as a way to defend themselves. And it's a last resort kind of defense. So they've usually given us some other signs that maybe we're not aware of to let us know that you need to stay away, you're making me nervous and I'm scared. And if we're not paying attention, we're not being good stewards, then they could bite. But biting is very, very rare, which is why it's important to always give every wild animal its space. So. I'm going to answer our last question here. Are there any spiders that live in trees? Yes, there are a lot of spiders that live in trees. Those orb weavers and the micranthinas, 
those very often will make their webs in trees, right? There's lots of good insects and other kinds of flying things that it might want to eat. So, okay, like I said, I could go another half hour on spiders. I really, really love them. Um, so I hope you enjoyed learning about spiders today. Kim did put in the chat at one point, I saw to, um, a link to our website to learn more about our spiders here in Missouri and even Illinois. Um, Department of Natural Resources or Conservation Departments are also great places to look up information about spiders in your local area. So the St. Louis Zoo, we are open again. Uh, please come visit us, but before you do, make sure to make a free timed reservation and bring your face mask with you. Uh, we do ask everyone that visits us to wear a face mask to help us in the prevention of the spread of the COVID-19 virus so that we can all remain healthy and happy. And while you're there, maintain an alpaca's distance apart, that's six feet apart from people who are in your immediate family to once again help us stay safe. So. Thank you all for joining me this morning. I had a lot of fun talking about my favorite invertebrate, and I hope you have a brand new appreciation for spiders, and we'll see you later. Bye.